ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم All thanks and praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom we thank seek for help and invoke for forgiveness We seek refuge with Allah from the evils within ourselves I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم إنما المؤمنون إخوة الله سبحانه وتعالى said in his glorious book surely the believers are brothers this month is designated as for black history month to celebrate the contributions that African Americans have made to American history in their struggles for freedom and equality. And a few weeks ago, it was Martin Luther King Jr. Day to celebrate his life and achievements. As an influential American civil rights leader, he was well known for his campaign for ra racial equity and to end racial segregation in this beautiful land, the US. To be relevant today, I would like to focus on the subject of racism and share some of the antidotes that our religion brought to our attention to eliminate this social disease. The racism is the belief that some races of people are better than others. It is also the poor treatments or violence against people because of their race. On the other hand, Islam promotes absolute e equality and brotherhood and sisterhood, and also promotes among people justice and mercy. Ever since the days of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam Islam has provided a clear example how racism can be terminated from the society Imagine before his prophethood Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the society that he lived in was functioning around tribalism and all sorts of discrimination discrimination against race, gender and class. But he sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with a message of equality between those races, genders and classes. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam said al-muslimu akhu al-muslim la yadhlimuhu wa la yuslimu. The Muslim is the brother of the Muslim. He is not unjust with him nor does he forsake him. And we see this brotherhood at the highest level at our annual pilgrimage, Hajj. Hajj shows the real Islamic brotherhood and sisterhood of all races and nations. When about 3 million Muslims from all over the world gather in the city of Mecca to perform the pilgrimage. In Mecca, you see people coming from all around the world and praying and worshiping in peace. 
and crying for their sins, for forgiveness. This is what changed the heart of Malcolm Max. When he performed Hajj in Mecca, he saw white, black, red, and all kinds of people joining the Hajj as one brotherhood and sisterhood. He was moved by this sight, and he wrote this. America needs to understand Islam because this is the one religion that erases from its society the race problem. Throughout my travels in Muslim world, I have met, talked to, and even eaten with people who in America would have been considered white, but the white attitude was removed from their minds by the religion of Islam. I have never before seen sincere and true brotherhood practiced by all colors together, irrespective of their colors, accepting the oneness of humanity through accepting one God. Now, I don't know if Malcolm X knew the hadith of Prophet ﷺ at that moment, but this statement reminds me the last sermon of the Prophet ﷺ, talking about the oneness of God and oneness of humanity. And he said, Ya ayyuhan nas, ala inna rabbakum wahid, wa inna abakum wahid. O people, your Lord is one, and your father Adam is one. And then he continued, Ala la fadla li arabiyin ala a'jami. There is no virtue of an Arab over non-Arab. Wala li a'jamiyin ala arabi. Nor an Arab over an Arab. Nor a non-Arab over an Arab. And then he concluded with, Wala li ahmara ala aswad. And neither white over black. Wala aswad ala ahmar, nor black over white. Illa bit taqwa. He said, except by righteousness. Unfortunately, racism takes place in so many different ways. I'm sure many of you have witnessed in different variations of them. None of the community is free from this social disease, sadly, including Muslim communities as well. Let's at least start from ourselves, from our community, and declare war against this social disease. Listen to the Quran and hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about this subject. He said, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa an yakunu khayran minhum. O you who have believed, let not some man scoff at other men, perhaps they may be better than them. And then he said, وَلَا نِسَاءٌ مِّن نِسَاءٍ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَكُنَّ خَيْرًا مِّنْهُنْ Nor let women scoff at other women. Perhaps they may be better than them. وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَلَا تَنَابَزُوا بِالْأَلْقَابِ And do not insult one another. And do not call each other by offensive nicknames. This is a verse from Surah Al-Hujurat. Chapter 49, verse 11. Brothers and sisters, it is important that we believe that the discrimination based on race is against the spirit of our beautiful faith. It is just wrong. Racism divides people into us and them based on where we come from or the color of our skin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dignified all of us and he called us children of Adam, Bani Adam, and he said in Surah Al-Asra, Isra, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam. Surely, definitely, we have honored the children of Adam. And Quran clearly and explicitly states that the purpose of the division of humanity into nations or race and tribe is to get to know one another, not to despise, not to, ta not to hate, and takes a step further and says, the only criterion 
for God is his and his servants is God consciousness and by his character. Again, I'm going to go back to Martin Luther King Jr. And he was saying the same universal truth in his famous I have a dream speech. He said, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. So it's all about your character, your personality, God consciousness. It's all about piety and good morals and ethics. And again, from Surah Al-Hujurat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us by saying, this time he is talking to whole humanity. He said, Ya ayyuhan nas, all mankind, all people. Inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. We created you from a single pair of a male and a female. And then, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا That you may know each other. He said, and made you into nations and tribes. And the point and the reason was that you may know each other. And then he said, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ Verily, the most honored of you in the sight of God is he or she who is the most righteous and pious one. Now, let's spend a little more time on this verse and try to understand a little deeper what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. There are some several principles which this beautiful verse tells us. First, as you hear the verse starts with, Ya ayyuhan nas. This message is not just for only Muslims. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing all humanity. While we Muslims are one brotherhood, this is part of a larger prophet, uh, brotherhood of humanity. And then the second part is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he created us from one man and one woman. Meaning that we are all the same and suggests the absolute gender equality. Not only race, but gender equality is the subject of this verse. It also means that all human beings are created through the same process. And no one can claim any superiority over the other based on race, color, language, or wealth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only looks at the hearts and the actions. As you know, the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ أَجْسَامِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَىٰ سُوَرِكُمْ وَلَاكِنْ يَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pays attention or looks at your deeds and hearts, not your appearances. And similar to this hadith, again he said, لَيْسَ لِأَحَدٍ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ فَضْلٌ إِلَّا بِالدِّينِ أو عمل صالح. So no one is better than anyone else, uh, no, no, anyone else except by religion or good deeds. As we see all the time in the Quranic verses, everything comes down to two things. <inaudible> Those who have faith in Allah and then do righteous deeds. Have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have God consciousness taqwa and do good deeds. And now back to the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued by saying, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا Allah made human beings into different groups and people. And the idea is to get to know one another. لِتَعَارَفُوا This is not meant to be a source of beating each other down with an attitude of, attitude of my group is better than your group. Or false pride, as is the case with tribalism, nationalism or racism. And these differences are, of course, not wrong, rather a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, as he said in Surah Al-Rum, chapter 30 and verse 22, he said, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And among his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth. 
واختلاف ألسنتكم وألوانكم and the difference of your languages and colors إن في ذلك لآيات للعالمين and then he said verily in that are indeed signs for those who know the point here is brothers and sisters individual piety is the only thing that makes a person better and greater than the other one other than that we are all brothers and sisters and absolutely equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Brothers and sisters, certainly racism is satanic. As you all know, Shaitan was the first racist. He was a believer of God, but unfortunately, because of his pride and arrogance, he disobeyed the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the statements and the belief of Ana khayrun min, I am better than him, approach cast Satan into the hell of eternity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the, this in Surah Al-A'raf, chapter 7 and verse 12 to inform us. And Shaitan, Satan said, Qala ana khayrun min khalaqtani min narin wa khalaqtahu min teen. He said, I am better than him, means Adam, you created him out of dust, and you created me out of fire. In his eyes, fire was better than the dust, and he was the first racist, and he disobeyed the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now the question of the, day, of the day is, why are we as believers having this problem as well, even though we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have all these Quranic and prophetic wisdom. Either openly or secretly, you notice it is sad truth. I think the key word is placed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verses that I mentioned. And the word is taqwa. God consciousness, righteousness, the depth of faith, excellence, ihsan. These are really important concepts. So we said racism is inhumane. And in this regard, there are two things really important to keep in mind. And I will finish my sermon with these two notes. The first thing is, self-examination and then the second thing is self-correction we should constantly check our attitude towards others by examining ourselves carefully and when we see you know something is wrong then we should correct ourselves immediately and then ask for forgiveness from that person or from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are Humbly, I think, two important ways to approach this satanic disease. And also, let's always keep in our mind and heart that we are always brothers and sisters. Again, I would like to remind that beautiful verse from Surah Al-Hujurat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ Again, one more time, I don't know how many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned taqwa, God consciousness in Surah Al-Hujurat, and said, Allah. He started at the beginning. Ya amunu, la bayna wa rasulihi, Allah. 
The chapter started with taqwa, the God consciousness. In the middle few times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this piety and righteousness again. And towards the end again reminded us that, you know, if you are seeking for brotherhood and sisterhood, the key is God consciousness. If you have that God consciousness, then they, you may receive mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us pray. Allahumma alif bayna qulubina wa aslih dhata baynina wa ahdina subula salam wa najjina min al-dhulumat ila al-nur. O Allah, reconcile between our hearts with love and understanding and resolve our hearts and our broken affairs and guide us towards the peace and paths of guidance and take us out to darkness of ignorance to the brightness of truth and guidance. Allahumma fir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat innaka sami'un qareebun mujibu al-ta'awat ameen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqim as-salah